Hey everybody, GoPro Guy, Summertime Ken here. I'm uh, just going to show you a little quick video about my <clears throat> fish finder, depth finder that I bought for my kayak. I've got the Bass Pro Shops Ascend FS12T and the um, fish finder, as you can see. Um, this here is the spot where it's kind of uh, you would think to mount it, I guess, on this particular kayak. But one thing you got to watch out for in mounting the, the display for the fish finder uh, is make sure you sit in it, paddle, and see where you where your hands go and where the, the paddle goes when you're paddling because that particular spot would have actually, um, you'd hit it pretty much every single time you're paddling. So I backed it up a little bit. It's still easy enough to reach, um, and I'm, I'm fairly sure that I'm have a, a long reach, and I can still reach that and see it just fine. Uh, from where the seat is there, so <clears throat> um, the mounting of it is pretty pretty easy. It comes with everything. The stand uh, that it sits on there, as you can see, they're just four screws. You just place it where you want to. Of course, make the pencil marks, um, the drill bit, and go ahead and screw that into the top for the display. Um, <clears throat> the difficult part on this is the transducer, where to mount it. You're going to see a lot of different videos probably on. Uh, where to mount the transducer, what to use to mount the transducer, what works best. Um, some people uh, will put it on a, um, kind of hang it over the side, build a little contraption, hang it, hang it over the side, or even the back like a, like a rudder. Um, but for me, what I did seemed like what most people do is mount the transducer in the hole. And the transducer is what actually reads what's underwater. Um, and then, of course, the cable there, it's going to display it up to the, to the screen. Um, and you also need to get, of course, a marine battery for it. Um, I have more about that um, coming up. But basically, as you can see, I mounted the transducer down here in the hole of the kayak. And the difficult thing about this kayak is it's a V-hole. Uh, you really want a flat bottom surface to mount the transducer because you want it to be as um, stable, level as possible. Um, and of course, you know, when you're moving your kayak around, turning it over, things like that, you want it to stay. So, um, this is, I was still able to mount it, as you can see, just kind of fill in the V down there and make sure that it's level. Um, one thing that I recommend too, and this is what I used, uh, most people you'll see use epoxy or marine goop or something like that that's a little bit more permanent. So that if it doesn't work, it's kind of a, a pain to get out once you've gotten it stuck on there. I actually use what's called duck seal, and you can get it at your local hardware store. Um, the good thing about this, I did it kind of for temporary reasons, just to kind of see if it worked and took it out, and it worked just fine. But I've left it like this, and I've had it like that for uh, over a year now, and never had any problems with it. It's never moved. I've turned my kayak upside down to get water um, out of the top of it. Um, it's never moved, never wavered, and the, the fish finders always work perfectly. So this seemed to be the best uh, best for me. Duck seal is a little tube of it is probably a little kind of rectangular um, box of it. It's kind of, um, it's probably about 4 or $5. Um, you local hardware store, you just put it on the bottom, cover the bottom of it with it, come up around the sides a little bit too to give it stability and make sure it's sitting down flat whether you have a v-hole or, or a flat bottom kayak and as you can see the wire runs up there <clears throat> and then there's another backing in there that's of course for the battery power and i just got a uh, marine battery batteries plus uh, it's probably about 50 bucks uh well maybe not that 40 40 or 50 dollars and um the Fish finder comes, of course, with the wire. You just hook it up to the battery. Um, I have my battery, as you can see over here, this is just a dry bag. When I put it in there, you can put it in Tupperware, dry bag, doesn't matter. And then I just put the battery down in the hole itself, close it up, and a good charge on the battery. Uh, you can get a good, I can usually get three or four full day of fishing trips out of it. So that's a little bit about mine. I do want to share one more thing as far as um, I did get the Humminbird Piranha Max 170, and <clears throat> I, when I was shopping, I looked at the 150, the 160, and the 170 from Humminbird, and I chose the 170 because of the 
the range, which is basically the angle that the transducer is going to look down um, underneath the water to see structure, to see movement of fish and, and whatnot. Um, this particular one has a range of 60 degrees, a little bit wider, so you can actually see fish to your right or left. Um, and they'll be hollowed if they're right or left. They'll be solid filled in if they're directly below you. So that has been very, very helpful for me. Um, the Piranha Max 150 uh, only goes down to, to 20, or excuse me, only sees 20 degrees. So you really are only seeing what's directly underneath your kayak. So you get a much more broad scope um, of where fish are and where structure is uh, with the 170, with the 60 degrees on there. The difference in price is about $20 between those two. So in the long run, I think this has been well, well worth it. So hope this has been a helpful video for you and uh, thanks for watching.